Hey guys, Harry here, back with another Britling vlog. Uh, this is still day six, and this is part eight of the footing build. I know in the description it said seven out of seven videos, so that will have changed eight out of eight now. Uh, I'm not quite sure when I go back if I'll be doing the splash course on this or another gang that took over this plot because of uh, me being away on holiday. I've come back today, uh, came back on Saturday, uh, which is, you know, is the day I'm recording this, but obviously you'll be seeing this on the Sunday. So uh, today's topic is going to be a little bit of a different one. I've touched on it sort of briefly when I did the Why I Arrive After 8 video. But we're going to talk about today, hello, little, uh, new, got two new little kittens, uh, I don't know if I mentioned it before, but one of them's tickling back of my neck. Anyway, um, the, today's topic is going to be, you know, something that I've touched on kind of in one of the, uh, in the why I arrive after eight videos, but it's talking about um, working to live or living to work. It is a age old discussion, but people have talked about ever since, you know, the beginning of people, the time of people actually going to work. Uh, should you live to work or work to live? And this is uh, a massive thing that you find with bricklayers in general, price workers um, who work on, you know, housing sites, particularly, but any sort of price work is you get people. Uh, you know, too unraveled in the work. They get too, they spend too much time there, they spend too many hours at work, and it becomes detrimental uh, to one, your performance and your state of mind. Um, I spent a period of time when I worked on my own working a good two, two hours or three hours more a day than I do now and I was getting less done, earning less money, and I thought the way to earn money was to spend more hours there, and the way to, you know, get more done was to spend more hours there, and I found it over the six or seven months I did it, I did it out of panic, actually. I did it out of fear, out of anxiety. It was when my first, you know, my first child, who was, who was almost two now next month, uh, was on its way, and obviously my first child, and I was doing it out of complete fear of the unknown and, and I looked back at it and realised that I was completely out of balance. I used to work, I used to set off for work at uh, quarter past six, I'd get to site for seven, uh, I'd sometimes be undoing, either undoing the padlock to site or I'd be there just as the site opened. It was a site we were on ready mix uh, at the time and I was just doing walls and garages but a fraction of the speed I do now. Um, obviously working solo uh, was a big factor. Obviously kills your speed having to work on your own. Uh, and I was I was start you know I was laying bricks at quarter past seven in the morning, and I wasn't packing up until like five o'clock on a night. The, every night I was locking the site up. It's empty in a lot of cases, and uh, I just wasn't getting the volume of work done. I was eating. Chris sandwiches for fucking my break. I was I was just living off of like few biscuits, having a having half an hour break, keep working, plodding along, and uh, God, I used to come home on a night, just fall asleep with the missus, and I just didn't have energy to do anything. I just literally get in, eat food, fall asleep, and I repeated that for like six months. Um, this was around the time the old man was uh, leaving his job, obviously sort of retiring. And I, and I remember just thinking, fucking hell, what the hell am I doing? I completely, I was getting to a point where I, I hated getting up for work. I hated getting up for work because I was spending so much time there. Um, it was just unbelievable. And you, you find people doing that these days. They, they work too many hours. They, you know, they're trying to earn money and, and you realise that they're getting nowhere. They're not thinking what they're doing. They're too foggy-headed just thinking, oh, let's put an extra hour in, let's put an extra two hours in, instead of thinking through what they're doing. So this is why I came to the um, sort of, in the past two years, uh, since since the little one was born, you know, since my son was born, I sort of came to a, a complete revelation of getting to site after eight. It was a massive thing. Obviously, that's why I've centred the channel. It's a bit of a catchy name, really, more than anything, but... Uh, I actually get to start after eight, more or less every day. 
Uh, there's a very, very rare occasion they get there, half seven. I've been known to do it. Everyone laughs and says, well, what are you done? You shit the bed. You know, same old saying that you're here. I'm building sites. And um, when I get there before eight o'clock, but, you know, there's, there's, there is a merit to what I'm doing. You know, overall, I'll be leaving site, say, four o'clock. And other gangs might have left. But I, uh, I might be the last bit later on site sometimes, but... I've arrived at half eight, quarter to nine. I've had an hour's snap. My actual hours working is relatively low, relatively low. Uh, and my day is, 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 it feels short, to be quite honest. Because I wake up at about quarter past half past seven in the morning, which most guys are just, most guys are on the scaffold. And then I, you know, I get out of bed. Old man picks me up from the house. Got all my kit that you know. I don't. I don't do a pat lunch. I don't wake up now really to do a pat lunch. I just buy work. I buy food from wherever near site. Meal deal. Tesco meal deals my go to. If there's a Tesco near the site, I'm absolutely quids in because Tesco meal deals. You can get about eight quid, eight or nine, ten quids worth of food for three quid. It's fantastic, and I'm a big thing. I'm the big thing I do when I make pack ups is I make too much. I make loads too much, and I spend loads of money on pack up stuff buy like, expensive meats and stuff and it just goes to waste a lot of time i'm spending more time making all this pack up i'm spending like half an hour 40 minutes on a night making these fancy pack ups when i could just i could just take five minutes and walk into a shop and get it so this is a big thing with you know time at work and it, it all comes down to same again if i even if i get in get in from work at say five o'clock for instance Say I've worked late and I get in at five o'clock. I'm fresh at five o'clock. I'm not knackered. I've not killed myself throughout them throughout them hours to try and earn money because I've got everything down to a, a flow. I'm not strain, straining myself every day at work. I've still got energy to come in, whip round the house, do some stuff, fix something that needs fixing, go on PlayStation, you know, spend time with young and go out into park or whatever because you're not... You know, you're not pushing yourself to them limits every day. You know, you're keeping uh, a level working practice through every day of the week. You know what I mean? It can, you know, it, it can be a struggle sometimes in winter. You know, you're getting rained off day after day and you sometimes have to hit it one day, work like a maniac. But them days are few and far between for me. Um, probably my hardest day was probably last week. Um not the week that's just gone that you've seen in this video but the week before the first time i went on a footing that felt like the hardest day i'd done in about six months and then after that after that the days just got easier and easier again that was just because i hadn't picked a footing block up in three four years but you know there's some people who are working and every morning it's feeling like they've been hit by a train every night they feel like they've been hit by a train knackered fucked you just gotta you gotta change the way you work you know i Got into a two-on-one gang briefly. Sort of me and the old man teamed up with another Brit layer. We did six days. Six days and they were the six hardest days of my working life. Uh, because I wasn't suited to that way of working. We were set. We were we were turning up to site. Me and my old man, we scrapped us after eight thing for a, a week. We were turning up at um, about uh, 7.30. And we weren't cleaning trowel off till 4.30. We were having 25 minutes snap instead of an hour. We were working a total of about two and two hours more a day. And, you know, we were earning about half of what we do on our own. Uh, old man was absolutely rushed off his feet. We just weren't working, you know. And that is just a prime example of a bad of, of just a bad working situation. Bloke we work we work with was sound, no wrong with him. We just do work well together, and that can, that's all it can be. So you've got to find an efficient way of working. That's the biggest thing, um, and that will that will that will affect your 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 life outside of work. If you're working inefficiently at work and you're knackered and you're fucked, it's gonna it's gonna you know it's gonna uh, you know it's gonna rub off on other parts of your life. I definitely did for me. There was bloody six days I worked. It was spread, it was span over two weeks. It was bad weather, but it was six week. It was six days in total, over two weeks, and I was literally getting in on the night and falling asleep on settee. No energy to do anything. Misses were complaining at me. She was going, "What the fuck are you doing? 
What the fuck, how much you weren't? Fucking hell. No, no, no. What are you doing? What are you doing? Go back to how you were before. And, you know, that's what I did. It's my missus, my missus who did it, to be fair. It was, it was sad. How much you weren't? Fucking hell, that much less. Fuck, fuck that. Go back to working on your own. And uh, that's all it took. That's all it took for me uh, to... I said, I said, hold on a minute. You know, how much less, you know... And people don't, people don't take me seriously when I say you could earn an extra 100, 200 quid a week doing some of these, you know, quicker methods I've been banging on about in my videos, pick and dip. Don't want to say that anymore because people might have a go at me. But I'm not kidding you. That was 100 or 200 quid. You know, if you've got a missus, you know, kids, they'll say, hold on a minute, that's some Christmas presents there. That's some birthday presents. That's, you know, that's fucking payment on a car or something. You know what I mean? you got to, you know, you can't take it lightly. If you can earn an extra few hundred quid, just doing little tweaks to how you're working, little methods, little changes of of the way you do things, it has a massive knock-on effect to the rest of your life just outside of work, and people don't want to talk about that. People don't want to talk about, oh, maybe, maybe, um, you know, working in this gang where you, where, you, where you can't earn over 800 quid a week. Maybe that, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. People are trying to tell you there's nothing wrong with 800 quid's a good wage. But if you could earn 1400, 1500, 1300, 1200 on a more consistent basis, working on your own, on a, you know, maybe not on, maybe on the type of work that people have told you don't want to go on. You know, a lot of people say, oh yeah, I don't run price work. You know, you, you know, you don't earn any more money or oh, hours insights are no good. You don't want to be working on working for this firm, that firm. You know, but. If you could make that extra couple hundred quid a week, would you do it for your family, for your loved ones? It change, you know, it can change your life. It definitely the ways I've been working in the last couple of years, um, implementing these methods that I've been talking about in multiple videos, they have, you know, they have made a difference. Earning that extra three, four hundred quid a week sometimes, it can make a massive difference to your life over over a couple of year period. People don't want to talk about that side of things, but if you work on yourself, in your, your, your inner, your actual self when you're, when you're working, you work on your own skill, um, you work on putting yourself in a good situation, whether it's uh, working, you know, in a two in a good two-on-one or a one-on-one or a, a one brick layer, you don't have to feel uh, a const the constraints and and you know limits on yourself you don't have to start putting limits on yourself saying no this isn't possible that ain't possible because you'll get people saying all sorts of stuff they say it to me um i've heard i've heard every which way you want to paint it oh you you know you'll only earn that sort this sort of money if you kill yourself or you only earn this sort of money if you you live at work and stuff and to be quite honest i've been putting in uh less hours um than i have in a long time you know i have to work you know i'm not gonna lie you know i have to work seven probably six seven eight hours on average between six and eight hours but you know a lot of people do those hours in normal jobs you know what i mean you know warehouse jobs um lay you know even site labor you ask a site laborer who works for, for an house builder say you know persimmon whoever uh keep them out whatever whatever site you ask them what time they have to get to site and what time they have to leave you know i tell you what they'll be working as long as bricklayers probably you know as working as you know probably longer in a lot of cases so um i know it's frowned upon some guys saying oh you should be leaving at two o'clock on these prices you should be leaving at you know you know three o'clock whatever you know you should have your money in by wednesday but top and bottom of it is it wasn't such a long time ago where the prices were a lot lower than they are now and i remember uh, when i was first one-on-one -on -one, uh, me and me and this labor a young lad we were only 17 it's my mate still my mate to this day and uh i were you know we were working from about half seven quarter to eight well three o'clock to quarter past three and i think we were on three eight five a thou and i was booking in about 700 quid in a good week and uh, a lot less experienced obviously and we were absolutely rushing like i were killing myself in those short hours and when i could have just took my time thought about a bit more what i were doing you know maybe maybe finish at four o'clock have a longer snap not get there as early change some of the working practice i wish i'd have known now you know uh, maybe I was, at, you know, 
I'd have earned probably more money, even with the prices back then. But you know, if you were, you know, if you're wanting to live a higher lifestyle, then you had to really put the hours in. You know, and I've, I've, I would have probably had to work at least an extra two hours on top of that to earn good money. Uh, but now we're in sort of a situation where we don't have to work as hard. We don't have to kill us sends. You know, the, the prices are double what they were when I started. And, you know, and for a lot of guys, they're probably, you know, I, you know, more than that. Some guys got even less, you know, it was, it was 285 when I started a thou. Probably, you know, guys were saying it were fucking less than that. But, you know, it is, it is circumstantial, obviously, the, the economic sort of economic world of building, you know, it goes in boom, cycles of boom and bust. There's obviously high times and lower times, even back uh, post covid you know you couldn't find a job you couldn't find a site to start on post covid and suddenly we in a few months boom job offers all over you go on every bricklay in uk pays there was not you know they still can't get enough bricklayers suddenly there's a shortage so you know there's 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 boom and bust times there's you know there's we don't know what the future holds but we've got to you know you've got to pace yourself while you can you know there's going to be times where you're probably going to have to work a bit longer for a little bit less if prices fluctuate. Um, and a big thing that people don't realise as well is it doesn't matter how much you can make in a day if you haven't got enough work in front of you. So that's something else to think about as well. So anyway, guys, that's my video for today. Sorry, I'll, I banged on a little bit at the end. Um, I've had to slow this footage down so I don't go past. Uh, I'm not talking over a black screen. So thank you very much, uh, guys, for watching. If you like the topics, give me some uh, ideas in the comments. Hit the like button, subscribe if you enjoy the content, and I'll be making uh, daily content coming forward. I might make every other day content if I'm pushed for uh, footage, but daily until then. So thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Middle walls in, front's up. I've been complaining about all this. Fucking key into the fucking block. Very mind the key's fucking deep as fuck been jointing it all complaining about fucking lintels not being bedded on far enough that's all right fucking, it's all drying too quick anyway it's fucking scraping these blocks off trying to make a bit of a neater job but it's got a key on it it's gonna get gobble on it so anyway yeah see where we get to if we can get this other wall